All right, guys, welcome back to the channel and uh, the CNC build series that we're doing. My name is Roger, and if you missed last week's video, we're building a homemade CNC machine. This is what we accomplished last week. For this week's video, we're going to continue assembly here on this table. I had some parts made today at work, and these are two splice plates that will mount back in behind here to hold the end of this ball screw. This will hold this aluminum plate here once I cut it to size for this mount here to screw to. It has a couple of different size holes in it. It has some five millimeter holes to utilize just the uh, fasteners that go in these tracks. And then I have some six millimeter holes or they're actually quarter of an inch. And once I mount this plate on the back side of here, I'm going to drill some holes all the way through and bolt this on with a lock nut and sandwich through the plate and the extrusions. And uh, make that a very secure attachment so it can't slide at all once that ball screw is in action and we are machining parts. And I'm doing the same thing down here in the corners in four locations. I will screw the aluminum plate to it with quarter inch fasteners and that way nothing can move. It'll be very secure. And the same thing here in the corners. Let's go down here and look. I'm going to replace all these brackets here with these corner brackets. These are 12 gauge steel, just like the others. And they have some holes that line up with the extrusions to use fasteners and some quarter inch holes to drill all the way through the extrusions and sandwich together. And that'll hold all of these corner joints and hold the legs in place very securely. So nothing should work its way loose in the future. But I wanted to show you that uh, these are powder coated black. They're ready to use. These I left raw. I want to verify that all the holes are in the correct location. And once I know that they are, I'll have six of these made and powder coated, but I'm not positive the holes will align correctly. So I wanted to test fit those before they were all made and powder coated. But anyway, let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is I borrowed a saw, a metal cutting saw. I'm going to cut all of these linear rails, these end pieces that go here. I'm going to cut those four pieces to the correct length. And uh, I ordered more fasteners to secure them. They will be here tomorrow, so I can't install these today. But I'm going to go ahead and cut them to length and have them ready when the fasteners do arrive tomorrow. But let's get started doing all that and see how much progress we make tonight. Okay, we have our first linear rail on here. You can see it here. It is bolted down tight. And that's as far as one spans. There'll be a seam here. I'll have to measure and cut the other one off here. I don't know what that length is yet. And I don't have the saw to do it today, but uh, we'll do that soon. But I wanted to show you how these work for anyone that's unfamiliar with this. Have these uh, socket head bolts and these little T-nuts and hopefully you can see this but the bolt goes through it's 
countersunk head and then this little t-nut threads on here you just start the threads a couple of threads just so it won't fall off and then when you get them all on you come in and you slide them in one at a time aligning them so they feed in straight and then once the entire row of them is in you can slide that piece down you saw me slide it all the way to the end and to align it perfectly there's this little tool it has a hole here on the end for your allen wrench but it slides over it's a perfect one-to-one -one fit with the linear rail and it is notched here to sit dead flush on the top of this extrusion so you reach through the hole here with your allen wrench and snug it up and i did one on each end and one in the middle just to hold everything close to start with and then you come in and you do them one at a time i snug them down by hand just enough to where they can't move and then i remove this and i come back and really lock them down tight and that makes everything flush down through here and perfectly straight and this little alignment tool was cheap and it was easy to use i will uh, put the part number in the list down below in the comment section i'm going to list all the materials down below i had a couple of people ask me for a materials list on my build so they know where i bought things and exactly what i'm using so i'm going to list that in the comments section on this video but you can see how this works next rail will just come in and butt up against this and this is cut very smooth so that transition will be smooth now the seam won't be in the same place on the other side of the machine it'll be up on the front corner so it only comes across one seam at a time on the top and at the bottom it'll be seamed forward also so i'm not riding across both of these transitions at one time but uh, all four of these rails will be staggered but i want to show you that up closely i'm going to get back to uh, installing a couple more rails so uh, we'll put you back on a time-lapse video and try to get four more of these rails these long ones in position that don't need to be cut before we wrap up tonight Okay, we have all of the long pieces of the linear rail put on. You can see them here. You can see that the joints are staggered on this side and then the opposite side is uh, totally different from that. So where this uh, split here, this joint will be in the front, the one over there will be in the rear. So neither gantry plate side is crossing uh, both of these splits at one time. So. see these over here that's what we accomplished tonight um, I need to take these short rails and cut them to length they're a little too long so there's four pieces that need to be cut to fit and I need to order some more hardware I've emptied out both bags here I believe that was uh, I believe it was 100 pieces of each of the uh, bolts and nuts and they are gone so I need to order at least another hundred i'll have to have another hundred or close to it for to finish these rails and then and another 50 to 100 for the uh for the x-axis rails also so i guess some hardware ordered tonight i will measure where i need to cut these four pieces of this uh linear rail track and uh try to get that cut here in the next day or two and i think i'm going to call it a night tonight we made a little bit of progress and uh, we'll get back on this again tomorrow and see what we can accomplish tomorrow.
Okay, let me show you the things that I just accomplished. Um, I borrowed this uh, little northern tool, chop saw, cut off saw. It's a metal cut off saw, it has a metal abrasive blade on it. And I used that, I uh, borrowed it from my dad. I used that to cut off the linear rail tracks here. All four of these are cut to length. As soon as the fasteners come in tomorrow, I will install those and we'll have all of our uh, Y. Um, axis tracks installed and I also cut and installed this piece here of extrusion for this end block or end bearing here for the screw to ride in. The bearing goes inside of here and it floats on this end so there's no force moving in and out. The only forces applied are, are like left and right and up and down so I have that pretty secure. The uh, all of the forces when they're cutting the linear axis this way supports the load on the other end since this bearing is floating and the bearing on the other end is this which will attach to this aluminum block i need to cut it to size and mount it but here are the mounting plates for that i installed them and just to check the fit you can see the one on the other side over here get a little closer but I'm utilizing these holes here to snap it onto the track and then I have some clearance holes here I will drill all the way through the center you can see how it aligns with the center of this uh, extrusion here I'll drill holes all the way through three bolts here and four down here and attach those aluminum blocks with through bolts to make sure that doesn't try to move in the future also I installed one of these just to test the holes and here is what it will look like. I removed all three of the brackets that was here grouped together and replaced it with this one. And I test fit this to make sure all the holes align before I powder coat it. And you do test fitting for a reason. These holes align perfect up here for the pass through bolts, the quarter inch bolts, and he's here do not. They centered a track instead of a solid part. So I need to shift these holes either inward or outward to hit the solid part of that extrusion. So I will make that adjustment tomorrow and get six of these made at work tomorrow and powder coated so they'll be ready to install on all of the six legs. That'll make that uh, all of the legs, all of the corners much stronger and a lot cleaner looking also. So I believe that brings you up to speed the Next thing I need to do is get a measurement for this aluminum block and cut two pieces out of it for these bearings to uh, attach to. And once they are cut to size, I can bring them over to the table and clamp them to this bracket and transfer these through holes uh, onto the bracket so I know exactly where to drill those. And I guess that is what I'm going to do next. So uh, I need to go to the basement and cut these blocks. So let me go do that and then we'll come back and catch up on the video again. Okay, I went and cut these uh, two plates and I cut these on the table saw. Uh, for anyone not familiar or has never tried that before, this is 20 millimeter thick, which is close to three quarters of an inch. And cuts on the table saw pretty easily. You just cut slow and use a good quality fine tooth blade and wear your protection, eye protection, because the hot chips fly everywhere. Uh, my clothes were covered in them, but I have a, a shield that I wear over my face that protects my eyes because the chips will bounce off of your head and off of your shirt and towards your face into your eyes, just if you're not careful. But anyway, I'm gonna clamp these plates onto this bar here in place securely. Use the transfer punches to uh, transfer the holes from the mounting plate to the aluminum saw and over to drill and tap holes to mount these and I guess that's the next thing we're going to do so let me clamp these up here and transfer the holes and get them ready to drill.
Okay, I have these holes marked. I wasn't able to use the transfer punches because the metal is not thick enough. You can see how deep these points are. They just, the metal's not deep enough to, for the transfer punch to start locating to find a center. So I had to take an ink pen and draw a circle. I'll have to do this the hard way and manually punch a hole in the center by guessing using the circle. It's not impossible to do. It's just a little bit more difficult. But uh, I guess the next thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to punch the center of these holes. I'm going to drill them and tap them for a quarter 20 fasteners. And uh, the hardware will be here tomorrow to mount these, but I'll go ahead and drill and tap the holes so we'll have everything ready to mount. And then tomorrow we can mount these and the rest of our linear rails here and have all of that secured. And uh, possibly if I can get these six pieces made and powder coated tomorrow, be able to put those corner braces on. If not, it might be the day after. But let me get started drilling and tapping these holes here and then we'll come back and install these. A couple of quick updates before we get started working tonight. Um, I had these six corner braces here made and powder coated at work today, so they are ready to install. I'll remove this one here where I test fit, and uh, we'll put all six of these on, and uh, that should stabilize the corners and make everything very secure. Once I have them all bolted in place, I need to drill these uh, quarter inch holes all the way through so I can bolt through and, and sandwich all the aluminum to that plate, make that joint stronger. Also, the hardware came in today to finish mounting these linear rails. And some more hardware came in to mount those corner braces. I have uh, two different kinds of hardware and uh, lock nuts here for those corner braces that we're getting ready to install. But um, I think that's it. That brings you guys up to speed. Let me get started installing these corner braces. And then we'll put these uh, linear rails on. Okay, I have a couple of quick updates for you guys before we get started working today. Today is Saturday. I put my old CNC, the wood one, on uh, Facebook Marketplace for sale. 
and I had about eh, 15 or 20 different people message me about it asking questions and this morning I had a guy come and buy it so the old CNC machine is gone I need to finish cleaning up here there was several things stuck under the machine and I need to go through this and get rid of some of it and clean up but now we have a space for the new machine to go uh, the guy showed up with a uh, little U-Haul enclosed trailer and we loaded it up in the trailer and he left out with the uh, CNC machine. I think he had a, like a four or five hour drive to get here and to go back home so he was from quite a ways off. But I uh, hope he enjoys the machine and gets as much use out of it as I did or, or maybe more. And uh, I wanted to show you these brackets. I have all of these corner brackets installed. You can see all the small fasteners that lock it into the extrusions and then the quarter inch holes that are left where I will drill holes and put the fasteners all the way through. And I actually started doing that this morning while I was waiting on the guy to show up to buy the CNC machine. You can see here I have drilled through. Uh, I, there's extra holes. I'm utilizing different holes for different positions, but I have a hole drilled through both legs and both of these uh, extrusions on the X and Y axis all the way through. So those are sandwiched together and bolted up snug and that makes a very solid joint in the corners. I also did this one. So it is finished. Oh, and if you'll notice, this is my wife's collection of milk jugs. You've probably seen that in one of the videos. She collects these year round and then in the spring and early summer she uses these. She cuts them off and plants different plants in them. She likes to grow things, uh, small plants from different seeds, uh, vegetables and fruit trees and things. So that's what she uses these for. So they'll be disappearing here in the next couple of weeks as she starts planting her little gardens and seeds and stuff in here to start growing. But I'm going to go ahead and start drilling the holes on these other four corners here to secure these legs good. So I'll be drilling the quarter inch holes through the extrusions and fastening all of these very secure like this end here. And I guess let's go ahead and get started on that. Well, here is the finished table, at least to uh, this point. Um, all of the uh, linear rails and bearings are on and everything slides nice and easy. I am having the uh, gantry side plates made that mount here on these bearings and come up for the, to support the Z-axis assembly. Those will be made out of three quarter inch aluminum plates and I have uh, Drop the plates off with a friend who is going to uh, make those, going to CNC those for me according to the files that I gave him. And we have all of the corner brackets bolted in place, all six of them, or all six of the leg brackets, I guess. there's They're all six in a corner, I guess you would say, but everything is drilled through and bolted solid, sandwiched together. I have the bearings here, these floating bearings mounted solid. I have the plate here for the rear bearing support or the ball screw support mounted. And I have drilled through and put bolts to keep that from being able to slide. You can see these here on the other side. That is bolted securely in place where it should be located. 
And that wraps up the table assembly, um, short of the ball screws, and we'll add the ball screws later. I, uh, as we wrap up this week's video, I told you I would tell you what parts it took to make this and how much I have invested so far. I'm going to put a list up on the screen here. You can see everything that I've purchased to this point and that is used in this assembly. Now I have bought more things than that are on this list, but we haven't used them yet. So I will add to this list as we apply things to the table and the assembly uh, gets larger or completed and try to keep you up to date on exactly what materials I use and what the total cost to build this table is. But I will also put a link to this table in the description below. But we'll keep a running total going. I guess that's going to be about it for this week's video. I'll see you guys again in a week or two. I'm going to be tied up for the next several days, so I won't make any progress on the table until next week. But hopefully early next week we'll have our gantry side plates back and we can start mounting those and working on the gantry. See you guys again in a week or two.